Hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. Now when we're running a multiple linear regression, which is one where we have more than one IV, something we have to watch for is the possibility that there is high correlation among the IVs, or that there is a strong linear relationship among the IVs. Such a thing leads to a problem of what is called multicollinearity. Why is that a multicollinearity uh, a bad thing? Why do we have to watch for it? Well, we have to watch for it because it could make it appear as though some or one or more of the IVs may be insignificant when they're actually significant, i.e. with multicollinearity it may appear that some of the uh, IVs may seem to be not to be predictors of the DV when they actually are. Okay. Of course then if you if if it appears that they are not significant you end up dropping them and you and hence you, you get a poorer model because you exclude something that should be in the model. So we want to know how to detect whether there is a presence of multicollinearity in the model that is of a level that is important to deal with. So let's say again, multicollinearity is a problem that could arise in multiple linear regression, not simple linear regression and it's bad because it could lead us to thinking that certain coefficients on the IVs are not significant when they actually are. Now multicollinearity is not like a light switch on or off. It's basically we're interested in, it's only an issue when the degree of it is high. So when we look at multicollinearity, when we say it's an issue it's because the degree of it is high or severe. Okay, so it's on a, it's on some kind of s um, a scale kind of thing. If you imagine it from uh, zero up to very very severe up to perfect. When we have perfect multicollinearity, uh, we won't even be able to estimate the model. You will find you'll see that there's an error message. Although I think on uh, this uh, SPSSPASW now you won't get perfect multicollinearity because if you where where you uh, inadvertently um, put in IVs that create that perfect multicollinearity SPSS will drop one of the variables okay now I want to show you how to determine whether multicollinearity is an issue we need something called the tolerance or the variance inflation factor so we estimate the model as usual, regression linear in the dependent variable put in earnings for the independent, let's put in experience school, experience squared. Now the background of this application is that we're interested in the factors that influence earnings level, experience of exper work experience, uh, level of schooling, number of years in education, and possibly this uh, experience, square of experience. Okay, now to bring up the statistics we're interested in, the variance inflation factor and multicollinearity statistics, we click on statistics, this pop-up box appears and we click on collinearity diagnostics, then OK, and then OK again. Now if you watch my previous videos you'll kind of recognize this output. What's different is in the coefficients box we've got this, these two extra columns and also a new box called collinearity diagnostics. But this collinearity diagnostics does not interest us. All we need is the, fine, the this one, collinearity statistics. And of these two, depending on what you've been taught here, uh, you, they're both basically saying the same thing. Uh, VIF is 1 over tolerance so you can look at either to give you the same information. So let's look at VIF which stands for so let's look at v 
VIF, which stands for Variance Inflation Factor. Now, the rule of thumb is this. If the VIF for any IV is around or exceeds 5, then we should start looking into possibility of... Um, should be kind of worried about this issue of multicollinearity. So 5 upwards, which is th this is when it becomes a concern. Maybe if it's around 5, it's a concern, but if it's around 10 or exceeds 10, then it's a major concern. So what we have here is for experience, so the VIF is 219, that's big, way bigger than 10. Experience squared, that is 217-ish. So that tells us that we have a problem of multicollinearity here. Indeed, if we look at the T statistics experience, look, is not significant. P value of 0.31. Experience squared is not significant. All right. Um, from education theory, we would expect the work experience though to be significant. So we would expect that the more that years of work experience will impact earnings. But according to this model, it doesn't, and that's because of multicollinearity. Right. So it's present. So what can we do about multicollinearity? Well, you can do loads of things. It's really in an introductory stats course, you might be told, well, just drop the, tr just drop each of them in turn and see which one delivers a model with higher R square and take the adjusted R square and take that as the model. Okay. So in other words, what we do here, we drop ex ex um, experience and refit it, and then we'll try dropping experience squared and refit it idea is that by dropping one of these ones which are multi which are involved which are uh, which for which are this multicollinearity problem the problem should disappear okay but we have to be careful in just dropping variables because if theory says that it supports evidence that um, the variables should be included then we shouldn't really just be dropping stuff okay so in, in um, by including this experience squared, a negative sign on this coefficient means that there is diminishing returns to scale of experience on earnings. So it kind of makes sense to include that, although there's a problem of multicollinearity. So what else can you do? What else you can do is you can possibly increase the sample size. By increasing the sample size you will reduce the effect of multicollinearity. But in practice, you know, increasing the sample size is not very practical because if you could increase sample size, why don't you do it earlier? Yet another thing you can do is you can use something called mean centering. Now the mean centering does not always work. Mean centering means that instead of regressing the y on the x's, we regress the y, the dependent the dv, on the x's which have been from from which we have subtracted the mean. So instead of regressing earnings on experience, we do earnings on experience minus its mean, and then experience squared would be the experience minus the mean all squared. And then statistical methods we could employ include um, ridge regression or somehow combining these two variables which are causing the multicollinearity into one s single index. Okay. Right, so I've pointed out the problems of multicollinearity and we've looked at how to detect it and we've discussed ways of possibly handling it.